Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Ways of Agile podcast. My name is Andrei Gliga. I'm your host. And together with me, we have Vlad, Vlad Skribnik, our co-host. So Hi. last episode, we introduced everyone to Adam and how we created Adam. Now we're going to look at some clear use cases of how someone can use Adam in their day-to-day -day life. So we actually set up two different job descriptions. We randomly searched online on LinkedIn. And what we're going to do now in this super quick episode is we're going to prompt Adam to read these job descriptions and then... We're going to look for any red flags or any, any analysis that Adam will uh, be able to identify. And then obviously we're going to share our opinions and uh, hopefully, yeah, it's, uh, it should all be clear. <laughs> yeah. Just, just one small caveat there. They're not exactly random job ads. One of them is I'll go into details when we, when we go through it, but one of them I have a more insight into, but okay. let's. Yeah, yeah. Plot twist. <laughs> but let, let's begin with the first one. All right. So, so as Adam, uh, usually how we uh, formulate things, please analyze this job posting. Basically, Vlad has just copied it, so he doesn't. He didn't share the link. Uh, lately, in ChatGPT, you can actually uh, uh, make ChatGPT browse specific links, but it's simple to just uh, copy paste. So let's see the answer here. The job does provide a clear overview of the company role and responsibilities. That's true. That's the main point that Adam has uh, highlighted is the role ambiguity. And this is something that actually I noticed as well when looking at the job description, because it does advertise a scrum master role. However, uh, maintaining test plans, test cases, and test scripts, uh, staying up to date with QA automation trends, most likely that role is not a scrum master. Yeah, and that, I, I can confirm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to let Vlad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> soon speak on this because I think he's got a bit more insight into this one. But one of the other things I want to uh, mention is that yes, you can also see at point number three, uh, it links to the first point where basically they seem to be looking for uh, half QA or automation QA and half Scrum Master. Yeah. Now, I'm going to let you lose, Vlad. <laughs> Go for it. No, thanks. But yeah, you're exactly spot on. Basically, this is a job that I actually went for an interview in. And what I've discovered is that they were less concerned about the Scrum Master experiences and knowledge and side of things, and a lot more interested in the QA side of things. The fact that I didn't come from a QA background was a big disadvantage. They They were just, they were looking at kind of what I would describe as a QA team lead uh, for a scrum team rather than a scrum master. Uh, so it, it was, uh, these red flags are kind of spot on, especially number one and number three, the ambiguity of the role and the automation tool knowledge. Um, so that, that, that was exactly on point. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's not important who the company yeah. is and who this is just an example of things that you can point out before applying for a job in order to, when you at least in the, uh, you know, go into the interview knowing what to expect. Yeah. One thing I would mention is some of these ones, like point number two, I'm not fully on board with it. Like uh, it's common for Scrum, for Scrum Masters to understand multiple agile methodologies. The focus of this role seems to be Scrum, but Kanban is also mentioned. Now, I don't see this as a red flag. And I actually, right now, I do have teams where we switched from Scrum to Kanban because their style was more easily used in, in that framework rather than Scrum. So I, I wouldn't pick on this as a, as a red flag. Yeah. So also be careful with, because uh, yeah, ChatGPT or Adam will analyze 
based on its own data. And that doesn't mean that you don't need to, uh, it doesn't mean that you fully need to accept what it says and you don't need to do a bit of extra research. Yeah. So yeah, uh, same with number four, which may or may not be a red flag. Now, this is something that you can also use in your interview process to, to make sure you ask and make sure you clear out some of the things which are a bit unclear. Fair enough. And uh, point five is something that is not something that I've actually discussed for this job, but it's something that I realized or I found a overall, like most companies will promise mentorship in some sort for especially junior scrum masters or low experience, and they never deliver it. So you're, you're on your own as soon as you start. It's your responsibility to reach out to more experienced scrum masters within the company and try to create a relationship and ask for advice and almost like build your own or, or create your own relationships, find your own mentor. Uh, the company itself won't, won't help with that, but that's, I wouldn't say is the, the biggest red flag. I just say that's a general attitude that you should probably have in the industry. It's almost help yourself in that, in, in that uh, scenario. Don't wait for the company to, to come in and, uh, and offer you growth possibilities yeah right and we have all right let's do another one yeah so this starts with a nice compliment <laughs> <laughs> job that seems quite comprehensive so let's look at the potential uh, red flags now undefined world famous client may or may not be a red flag i i, I can see where Adam is coming from because such vagueness might indicate a reluctance to reveal the client due to possible negative implications. At the same time, I have worked in companies where clients did not want to be mentioned for different reasons, but there weren't any red flags over there. So this may or may not be a red flag. However, uh, we're looking at point number two, mixed role responsibilities. Again, uh, make sure there's no confusion in your role responsibilities for a scrum master. So Adam is actually good at detecting that. So, so we can count on Adam to make sure uh, he's filtering out all of those situations. Uh, it's something that I also recommend to look for in a job before you apply for a scrum master role that you don't end up doing, I don't know, two or three different roles. I was in that situation. I was in that position where I basically done uh, QA, I've done BA and I've done Scrum on the side and I wasn't really happy with that. Hybrid work conditions, that's again, not a red flag, depends, depends on you. It depends if you want to do that or if you don't want to do that, then uh, okay. Usually that's also negotiable. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that it, it depends on where you work. Like I know, for instance, the UK is pushing hybrid and back to the office a lot harder than other countries. Um, so it depends on your specific context, but usually that one is negotiable. Yeah. Number four, uh, I saw this in, in, in so many places, just a vague skill requirement added there, SDLC understanding, that's a must. I think some of those job ads, job postings, they're just, you copy paste stuff from, <laughs> from the internet, yeah. uh, stuff that you see, stuff that you think that you need. And if it's too vague, perhaps it may not be as required as you may think. Exactly. I would say that it, once you, you get this vague skill requirements within a job ads, the, the main that indicates that the job ad was created by a recruiter who has no idea what Scrum or Agile is. He, they, they just went from what they read on the internet. So they copy pasted absolutely everything. All right. Point number five, undefined benefits. Now, I think this is actually a red flag. I think a lot of companies are offering attractive salary and benefits package, and they're not saying anything about it. And then you go to the interview and they're still not going to say anything about it. They may ask you like what your expectations are. And then based off of that, they're going to be like, ah, that's too much for us. <laughs> yeah. So it, I think 
I would really like uh, in the future, in the near future, for companies to be more upfront with uh, their benefits package. Uh, a lot of companies actually are with their benefits package, but not with their salary. But to also hide the benefits package, it's a bit, I don't know. It's, it's a, a red flag here. Yeah, it's a recruiter trick to, to get you to bite first because it looks interesting or intriguing. And then uh, it's almost like in, you, in your mind, something interesting or something to discover during the interview. So it can pique your curiosity, but then it just never gets brought up. Or if it does, it's kind of get gets shut down immediately. So it, yeah, it is something that a bit more transparency would be useful. All right. And point number six, standardize Scrum practices among teams. Now, I'm I'm a bit in between with this one because I actually think this one is copied from somewhere else yeah, because absolutely. it's such a standard thing to say. At the same time, this could also imply inconsistencies across teams. Now, I would most likely be inclined to say that this isn't actually the thing. It's just a copy paste. I think you may actually end up being a scrum master in one team or two teams over there and not necessarily standardize the practices among all of the teams. Uh, so this one may or may not be a red flag. Yeah, I, I, I would say, say it's just a copy paste. Yeah, I, I would uh, say this one is almost a little bit of naivete. Like people, what that what they think scrum is you take it with a grain of salt. You're the scrum master at the end of the day. If you're going for this role, you would make the plan and understand the context of the company and you know design the plan that the company needs to implement. So it might not be perfect standardized approach. It might be the different teams within the same company have slightly different needs. So a, a bit of adaptation is required with that one. But again, considering that you're going to be to go through a recruiter and is there a recruiter that wrote this uh, this job ad, I wouldn't expect them to understand Scrum or understand exactly what what their what all the requirements of a Scrum master are. So this one's one of those, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from, but yeah, it's don't, don't take it too seriously. So yeah. Um, this was a short kind of yeah. introduction to what Adam can do. Uh, we're going to have a few more of these ones, real life situations and how you can use Adam. But I think for this one, uh, Keep it we short. pretty much <laughs> done what we have uh, intended to do. Obviously, if, if you have any questions, any other suggestions, pop them in the chat. And obviously, uh, subscribe like uh we would oh, love is... to have two followers so yeah <laughs> yeah thank you follower whoever you are yeah exactly uh, yeah. That was, i think that was it right well yeah one very last thing we're slowly all of these elements are considered them a little bit of a demo uh we're building up towards a very brief and almost like a, a basic udemy course for agile beginners of using AI in order to create your own AI mentor, redesign your CV to uh, increase your chances of getting a job, analyze job ads, write cover letters. We're, we're going to go through all of these these um, steps within a very basic beginner's guide, Udemy course. So in order, if you're trying to start off, especially start off as a scrum master, it makes it more easier to navigate. It makes it makes it uh, easier to get guidance from an actual from your own mentor that you have, and then easier to na get get to the interview stage. You know, once you're in the interview stage, it's up to you if you can uh, deliver what you, what you've promised. But at least this will help you get interviews a little bit easier. Right. Yeah, that Thank is you. about it. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Well, thanks, everyone. That was it.